Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Keith tipped me off to a good story out of North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina court repeals $2 million verdict because the defendant did not know he was on trial. Now, <laughs> we talk about due process. That is the idea that you are notified of the charges against you and you're given the opportunity to be heard. Well, if you aren't there and you were not notified, then you have no due process. So this is a great case to illustrate that from the Charlotte Observer. Michael Gordon wrote it. North Carolina's second highest court has thrown out a $2.3 million civil judgment handed down against a person from Mooresville. And this was from a lawsuit that went to trial. And it gets even crazier because the lawsuit alleged that the defendant had an affair with someone who was married. And North Carolina is one of those states where that's actually something you can sue someone for. It's not true in all 50 states, but it's true in North Carolina. Uh, the problem, of course, is the defendant did not know he was on trial, uh, was not in court, and apparently wasn't notified. In a ruling handed down this week, a three-judge panel of the North Carolina Court of Appeals said that the man's due process rights were violated because the notice for his trial that took place in 2019 and other legal notifications went to an address where he no longer lived. He never responded to it, and they assumed, well, he got it, just didn't respond to it. In fact, the man only learned of the trial when a reporter called him to get his reaction about losing a multi-million dollar verdict at a trial. Um, the judge on appeal wrote, the facts before us do not indicate that he was negligent or inattentive to his case. This is a case where he never received proper notice of trial. Now, on appeal, his attorney said the ruling upholds her client's constitutional rights. In due process, it's not all right that a judgment is handed down against someone who did not know there was a trial taking place. Uh, basically, it's a do-over or a potential do-over. The unanimous opinion, which included the support of appeals court judge John Arrowwood of Charlotte, grants Johnson a new trial. It allows him, for now, to keep the millions of dollars in his pocket because the judgment was, again, for $2 million. But it also means the details of his disruptive workplace affair stand to receive another airing in court. So apparently, there was a trial where all kinds of lurid details came out about a relationship between a doctor and someone who worked with him. Um, and that a doctor's private behavior remains a matter of public reckoning comes down to a peculiarity of North Carolina law. North Carolina remains among only a handful of states that still allow lawsuits for criminal conversation. That is a legalistic fig leaf defining the act of uh, spending time with someone else's husband or wife, but spending that time in a way that adults do behind closed doors, if you know what I mean. Uh, in this case, the uh, wife involved was a longtime surgical assistant at the defendant's Mooresville practice with whom the doctor is alleged to have initiated a relationship in 2014. And this was all from the appeals court opinion. And of course, at trial, the jury believed this all to be true, but there was nobody rebutting the evidence. There was nobody giving the other side of the story. Over the next four years of that relationship, the doctor supplied uh, the uh, other party to the relationship with um, drugs, gave her a cell phone for private communications, and regularly met her in a motel room and at a Lake Norman home. Now, I'm not sure where Lake Norman is other than probably more, you know, North Carolina. <laughs> But I suspect it's a nice place. The uh, relationship imploded when another employee with that practice found a photo on the doctor's phone showing him and the other party having a relationship, but the photograph was explicit, according to the opinion, when the small town inevitability occurred, that is, the photo found its way to a cousin of the woman she confessed to her husband what had been going on with the doctor. The couple then reconciled, but she lost her job, and uh, the husband sought mental health treatment. But he also sued the doctor. Ain't nothing going to make your mind at ease better than suing somebody. <laughs> the 2018 civil complaint accused the doctor 
of alienation of affection and criminal conversation and of interfering with a genuine love and affection within the marriage of the couple that was married. From there, the court records of the case get a little more complicated. Uh, as for determining what happened and why, eh, it's not so straightforward. According to the Court of Appeals, the two sides reported in early 2019 that they had reached a settlement, but an agreement was never signed. So then the question is, what happened with the fact that a trial took place without the defendant ever knowing it? Communications between the parties and the Superior Court judge were further compromised when the attorney for the doctor asked to be removed from the case, citing his client's lack of communication, uh, along with contempt towards his legal advice and failure to procure payment for legal fees. If you don't pay your attorney, that will often cause a breakdown in that relationship. So that may be part of the problem. But on a side note, the doctor said in his appeal that he did not know that his lawyer had left him until after the trial because the attorney mailed the departure notice to the wrong address also. <laughs> that June, uh, people prepared for trial, not the doctor, but the other people. According to the appeals court, the uh, judge issued a pretrial order that only one side signed. The trial took place on June 24th and 25th in 2019, and of course, the defendant did not show up, but the plaintiffs did. After only one side of the evidence was presented to the jury, the members awarded the plaintiff $1.5 million in punitive damages and $794,000 in a compensatory award. After getting a copy of the court file and learning of the judgment against him, the doctor filed his own appeal, alleging that the judge exceeded the authority on a number of fronts, but of course, the appeals court opinion landed on the doctor's side on the due process claim, finding the doctor could not have gotten a fair trial when he was not provided with the date, time, or location of the proceedings. Uh, meanwhile, the plaintiff's attorney did not respond to the Charlotte Observer's uh, request for comment by email and telephonically. <laughs> but this is one of those things where I've been in court before, both on my cases and on watching other cases happen in a courtroom. So I, I've mentioned before, a lot of times I'll say this happened to a client of mine, this happened to one of my cases. But I've also just been sitting in court before where they say they start calling cases. Bunch of stuff is on the docket. It's, it's fairly uncommon that you go to court where you're the only thing on the docket, unless it's a trial. But quite often, all the pre-trial stuff and everything, there'll be a whole bunch of stuff happening. And so I've been in court before, waiting for my case to get called, and I hear the court call a case. And somebody goes, ready, Your Honor. They stand up and walk the front. The judge goes, where's the other side? And the judge calls the case again. Nobody answers. Is anybody here from? The judge will look at one side and go, do you know if they know about today's hearing? Do you, have, you, have you spoken to them? Now, the court will send out notices. So if a notice gets sent out and doesn't get returned, the court will kind of presume you got it. But I've seen it before where the judge will say to one side, do you know if they know about this? And I've seen it where the other side goes, yes, I spoke to them yesterday. They said they'd be here. Or I don't know, Your Honor, I haven't spoken to them. I haven't spoken to them. And I've seen a judge then turn to his clerk and say, would you please call? And the judge will flip the file, call the uh, attorney for the party and find out where they are. Call them. Just call them. This, this isn't that complicated. So the idea that a two-day jury trial was held. No one showed up for the defendant. Not the defendant, not his attorney. And nobody bothered to make some phone calls to ask around? To, to, do you have any idea where they are? Because here's the thing. Parties can sometimes skip trials. I've seen it before where an attorney shows up and says, I'm going to conduct the case without my client here. And if they don't subpoena my client to be here, my client doesn't have to be here. I've seen that happen before in a civil case. So that can happen. But the idea that an attorney doesn't show up and the defendant doesn't show up and nobody makes the phone calls to say, gee, I wonder why there's been no communication from the defendant from this point to now when at one point in time, the defendant who appears to have means had an attorney. I mean, is, 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 is the doctor really going to let a case proceed against him when someone's asking for millions of dollars in damages? Is, is he going to let that happen without him being there? So this looks like the court dropped the ball, as they say. 
And I've also seen it before where a judge will actually say to the plaintiff's counsel or the defense counsel, would you mind stepping outside and calling them yourself and to see if you, you can find out where they are? I mean, it, you know, <laughs> this isn't that difficult. So the case has two interesting angles, though. And one is that the verdict of $2 million got overturned because the defendant didn't know he was on trial. And of course, underlying this is this unusual law for nowadays that's still on the books in North Carolina, where you can sue somebody who initiates an affair with your spouse. Again, a little unusual in this day and age. I've actually talked about that before. I did a video a long, long time ago about that, but uh, it's been a while. So great story Keith sent. Thanks a lot from the Charlotte Observer, which is a great newspaper, by the way. The North Carolina court repeals a $2 million adultery verdict because the doctor did not know he was on trial. Michael Gordon wrote it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Judge a man by his questions rather than by his answers.